Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to my video series on the Zip uh, Guider Stitch Knitting Machine. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the videos that I'm making will be also beneficial to the uh, lucky owners of um, virtually any manual uh, garter stitch machine. So just because yours is not called Zip, but it could be called record it could be called the meta and um, a bunch of other uh, uh, models uh, produced long long time ago and still circulating around so if you have one of those uh, you will still benefit from this videos because the principle of knitting is the same the approach is still the same so today i want to show you how to knit this um, 3D kind of looking stitch up here. It's a fairly easy knit and um, fairly quickly to do and I believe it's it's pretty neat. So we'll start with this one and then we'll see, maybe we'll uh, feel adventurous and do the other one as well. These are the two I've practiced so far. I found it fairly easy uh, to knit and it's, it's really fun. I found it, um, very relaxing to hand manipulate the machine so if you haven't seen my first video I encourage you to do so especially if you're new to this machine I will not be going over the basics how to knit how to cast on and so on I have the whole another video uh, on my channel so um, go and and look for it I will also include the link to my first video in the description of this one so let's let's start let's start with this uh, this one over here okay so for any hand manipulation when you're trying to do something with your fabric before you knit any kind of stitch transfer and so on you want to use the um, uh, so you have two slots on your machine one is closer to the moving hooks and the other one is closer uh, the other pair is closer to you so for for um, for the pattern knitting and I'll try to zoom out enough to show you so for the pattern knitting you will you want to move your comb out to the uh, to the pair of slots that are closer to you okay not the pattern knitting I'm sorry what I'm talking about here is the stitch manipulation because for the knitting you will st the actual knit in the row you will still move them closer to your machine all right so let me zoom back in here okay here we go okay so let's let's do it so we'll uh a, a little bit of um overview the way it's explained in the manual to this machine uh there there are two types of stitches that are uh, under those that are currently hooked on the comb. Um, there's the, what I call them, the frown stitches, kind of half circle going this way, right? They right under the stitch. And then there's smiley stitches or um, the, the bottom half of, uh, Smile, uh, they're really going this way, right? Half a circle going this way. So those the smiley ones are in, uh, if you look for them, they will be in between the stitches. So these terminology is important uh, for, uh, for understanding uh, the different patterns that you can find in various pattern books. So for today, for now, for this particular pattern, you we will be interested in the frowny stitches the stitches that right under each loop that's currently on the comb all right so we will be taking the frowny stitch and from the previous row every other every other frowny stitch and hang it back on the tooth of the comb just like so Okay. And you go right like this. So but then I skip one and I hang one. Skip one, 
in one. And again, is in is in my previous video. Um, if you're having trouble doing this, chances are your tension is too tight. All right. So generally speaking, for the garter stitch, you want your tension be a bit looser than for the regular stockinette stitch. The garter stitch is just more 3D, if you will, right? And it's it more airy, and so it needs more space. So again, take your time to experiment with your machine. Take your time and find the stitch size that's perfect for you, that feels good for, for you, for your machine, and, and most importantly, for the yarn that you're using. Because each yarn, even with the same thickness, might require a different tension, depending on the elasticity, the yarn, uh, the fiber content, and so on. So I, I done my manipulations. Now I need to knit two rows. Again, I'm not explaining too much as far as how to knit this rows because you can find that in my other video. I'm just doing this row fairly quickly. You've got to be careful with your double stitches. Make sure that they knit properly. All right, there we go. This was one row. because we don't have double stitches there. First row with these double stitches could be a little tricky, but I didn't find it being too too bad. Bad enough for me not not to want to continue needing this. Oops, excuse me. My thread decided to Okay, here we go. So we needed two rows since our manipulation, right? Now you need to look carefully at your knitting. And what you will notice, hopefully, uh, and uh, of course, one more thing I want to mention, when you're practicing, when you're just practicing on any machine, I, I suggest that you choose the yarn with a light color. It's much easier to see the stitches. It's much easier to understand the structure of the fabric. If you if you pick a, a dark color, it would be very challenging for you. Uh, after you have some experience and, and you feel comfortable, but even then, if you ask uh, people who've been knitting for a long, long time, they would still tell you that um, they, they try to avoid dark, dark colors as much as possible. It's very hard to work with them. It's very hard on your eyes too. So do yourself a favor when you're practicing, when you're just learning especially, pick a bright color, pick a, a light color. Um, you, you, you will see how much easier your life would be with it. Okay, so um, you will notice here that every other stitch now will have double frowny loops here. They're kind of thicker than the regular ones, right? Remember we pull them over, so every other one will have this double frowny, um, frowny loops here. And we're gonna leave those alone. We're not gonna mess with those. Uh, and I usually don't mess with the edge stitches either. But uh, with the rest of the fabric, you will, you will do the alternating frowny loops where there's just one frowny loop you do the same thing right so again you hang every other one so alternating you hang it on your comb teeth respective comb teeth right Okay, look at me, I'm doing pretty good, keeping my head out of the picture. Uh, those of you who watched the first video probably heard me saying that I ended up 
redoing the whole video. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I'll probably, let's try and, no, I don't want to double the, the corner stitches. However, I've, I'm still practicing just like you are. I'm just sharing what I've learned so far. Don't take this as a gospel, right? So I might experiment a little bit with it and discover that I should uh, double the uh, edge stitches every other row. I don't know, we'll see. Um, that's what I love about machine knitting is the experimenting part and that's what I always advise to those who just start knitting. Take your time. Don't get fixated on the beautiful, um, challenging garment. Take your time to play with your machine, to get to know it, to, to learn it, to feel it, right? Um, you will you will be happy you do it you did it so anyway here we go every other one i moved my comb back to the slots that are closer to my machine and again same thing same same principle we needing we are needing two rows right we are needing two rows here we go all right, one, turn around, and two. Okay. We had some debates in, in one of the groups. Um, somebody was arguing with me as I was expecting they would those the hand kneaders that oh it's so tedious it's faster to knead it by hand no it's not it might seem this way but it's not so as you can see we we have this pattern start form uh, forming already I, I hope you can notice that it's not as prominent yet we only made a few a few rows so far so let's do at least another two rows oh and I wanted to share something with you real quick as well excuse my head here uh, have you seen oops did I not okay here we go somehow somehow my camera decided to zoom out I guess but that's okay I'll, I'll I'll repeat the manipulation. See, if for some reason they were too far, that's fine. Well, we zoomed it back in, it should be fine now. Okay, here we go. I wanted to share this with you. Uh, some of you might have seen this. This is a clover um, row counter that you can hang over your neck like this, right? Very handy for this machine, as, uh, as you probably noticed by now, it does not have the row counter. I'm planning to knit um, just a simple cardigan in this simple plain, um, st uh, simple plain garter stitch. So I made my uh, sample already right here. Okay, I steamed it and I washed it and it's ready to go. I'm going to measure it and try to knit a cardigan for myself if I have enough needles here for the width, for the, for the back width, which I think, which I think I, I, I do have. So, um, yeah, and, and for, for, for knitting the garments, the row counter like this, I think would be a big helper. At least it was a big helper for me as I was, needing even my um, swatch I was I did 30 stitches by 40 row swatch and it turned out quite beautifully so we'll see wish me luck anyway let's continue with our with our pattern couple more rows so again I'm looking at the frowny stitches and I lift the ones every other one the ones that just have one frowny stitch at the bottom and I skip those that have two right so we alternating every two rows it's really a very simple pattern 
It doesn't take that long to manipulate, and it seems like it, it's quite interesting in effect. At least I, I like the way it looks. So I might, you might not do the whole thing with this pattern, and I think I can see uh, for garter stitch garments, it could be just, um, just a design element, you know, maybe just at the border or at the top, not necessarily all the way around, so. And then again, maybe you feel like, just like me, um, enjoy playing with your machine, and then why not, right? All right, so this is one row, and one more row. what we got let me show you I think by now the pattern should be visible yes so a few more rows the pattern would probably be even more visible but you can see you can already see the pattern I hope so now I'm going to go off camera need a few rows separating rows and then show you how to make the lace stitch. So look for another video for the lace stitch. Talk to you later.